Let me give an example. Um, consider a finite length sequence, five long, and it's this sequence. It's one at n equals zero, and it's zero otherwise. So if we, if we graph it. Firstly, why are we calling this a finite length sequence of n equals five? Isn't it also a finite length sequence of length 36 because x of 35 is equal to zero. What's going on with there with that, Alex? Uh, sir, we normally don't count zero padding when it comes to sequence length. Okay, well then why couldn't we say that this is a uh, n of one sequence? Um, I, do you care about the information that is in the zeros? Like you didn't just add them afterwards? Yeah, that, so you're asking the right question. Drawing this graph alone, if I just look at the definition, I could say it's n equals one or n equals 75 or n equals 1,012. This extra n equals five is important, not at all for the DTFT. It won't affect what the DTFT is at all, but it does affect the DFT because it affects how frequently that, DTF, that DFT samples the DTFT. So, from what we've considered so far, the DTFT makes no difference what, what length it is. Just as Alex says, we'd probably, for simplicity's sake, just call it a capital N equals one. But now we need two pieces of information, both the definition of what our sequence is and someone to tell you what our, what our input length is. So let's figure it out. The DFT of this sequence is gonna be equal to the sum from N equals zero to capital N minus one of X of N, E to the minus J, 2 pi kn over capital N. So that's the definition. And now we'll plug in our values. When we plug in our values, it should be pretty clear that for our sequence, we're, we're only going to be summing between n equals 0 and 0. That's our only non-zero value. As we sum for x of n for any other value of n, it's going to be 0, and there's no point in, in summing together 0 times anything because the answer will be we're just going to be summing zero. So that's going to be one times e to the minus j two pi kn over capital N. And now we can start plugging in some of our results. If it's only n equals zero, then we can substitute in zero for n here and we get e to the minus j two pi k. Little n is only going to be zero capital N is going to be uh, five. So that's going to be e to the zero, and that's going to be one. When we say it's going to be equal to one, what we're really saying is that the sequence is five long and looks like this. Don't confuse that just because it comes to one, it means it's a single scalar one. If we put in something that's a length of five, we're going to have to get something out that's a length of five. And what we just computed, by the way, is the fact that the transform of an impulse in is a one out. It's a set of ones out. Sir, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, why is our big N minus one on top of the summation a symbol of zero and not a four? Well, we, we said that capital N is five, right? Yes, sir. And that means that we have to have five different values. So let's let's count up our values. We've got we've got one, two, three, four, five values. So that makes sense. So it has a capital N of five. So remember that if we if if our signal in general, here's a here's a random signal. Here's a random signal that I've drawn. It is indexed up to a capital N value of two. So what's your capital N of this signal? Three. Right. Does that answer your question? Sir, my question was on top of the summation. It was like n equals zero to zero. Right. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I see what you're saying. You could have, if you wanted to, write it out long ways. And you'd get this is x of zero times e to the zero plus x of one times e to the minus j. 2 pi k, here n is going to be 1 over n, plus x of 2, 
e to the minus j uh, 2 pi 2 k over capital N plus, and all the way up to the highest value, which will be x of capital N minus 1 times e to the minus j 2 pi k capital N minus 1 um, all over all over capital N. With me so far, Fawaz? Yes, sir. But for our particular, so this is true always, but for this particular sequence, x of one is zero, and x of two is zero. And all of them are zero, except for our very first value. And since we're gonna be multiplying them, this exponential stuff by zeros, it's the same thing as not, we don't even really need to add them up. So therefore, the only one we really care about is that very first value is, is n of one because of our particular sequence. Does that make sense? So typically, it would just be four instead of zero. Like, I see why you put zero. That's right. right. Okay. That's right. That makes sense. Good. Let me give you a quick, see, it's 937. Let me give you a quick real-world example about why this would be uh, potentially interesting. 